Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and believe different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Here in Louisiana, we have a saying, we don't eat to live, we live to eat. And y'all, that could have a double meaning. In every Bayou Village and home we visited, we found one thing to be true. Although all of our dishes taste great, they're not all good for us. So my mission today is to take our time-honored recipes and make them a little healthier for us. I'm Chef John Falls. Welcome to Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart. Hello. Hey, hey. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hi, right <laughs> y'all. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you, Frank. Nice to see you, Frank. How you doing, Alan? It's good to have you there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, welcome, welcome. Oh, you sound great today. Thank y'all so much for being so excited. Is that for me? Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's what I like to hear. Y'all, welcome to my home kitchen. It's so nice to have you here, and I tell you, we have a great menu plan for you today. In fact, we're going to begin with a dish that came from this fabulous guy right here, Frank Russo from Berwick, Louisiana. Y'all, give him a hand. Uh, <laughs> Berwick as, uh, Berwick, as many of you know, is a fabulous little Cajun village uh, near Morgan City, right, near Morgan City, Louisiana, the home of the Shrimp and Petroleum Festival of Louisiana. And uh, we want to talk about that a little bit, too. But the mission of the show today, Frank gave me one of his time-honored traditional recipes that's done in his home. In fact, it was a uh, recipe of his father-in-law, and I'll show you his picture in a minute. And my challenge is to modify that recipe slightly just to make it taste exactly as uh, Luke uh, Lepre did. Lepre, right? Lepre. Luke Lepre did. And, uh, but cut the fats dramatically and the sodium in the dish. So, y'all, I went out to uh, Frank's home and got into the kitchen with his uh, grandkids, and I'll tell you, we had a fabulous day. Let me show you what we did out there. In Louisiana, you're never far away from bayous, swamps, or rivers. These waterways are not only a great source of recreation, but also a great source of the state's leading seafood and petroleum industry. Learning a lesson from the flood of 1927, this seawall was built to protect Berwick and Morgan City from the Atchafalaya River and should it ever flood again. Artwork depicts the history of this area, including the 1950s movie Thunder Bay. Frank Russo helped to move this lighthouse from the mouth of the river to Berwick as a tourist attraction. Here I came to know how Morgan City became the shrimp capital of the world. Well, my shrimp. recollection or understanding of it is that uh, maybe in the late 30s or early 40s, they start catching shrimp out of here. And a lot of the shrimpers from Florida, maybe Alabama and what have you, just moved on down. And of course, one thing led to another. The more, bo more boats that you have and the more shrimp that you have, then that's how yeah. the title came <laughs> into effect. Well, y'all, it was soon time to get busy in the kitchen, and Courtney and Allison were ready to help. While the girls washed the lettuce, I learned that Courtney had won the grand championship with this shrimp salad recipe. Boy, I tell you, two talented young ladies. Miss Russo offered to dry the lettuce leaves while we prepared this award-winning ramelade sauce, y'all. Okay, okay, okay. Now, put some horseradish. The chicken off. A little mayonnaise went into the bowl, and then a little ketchup and a good shot of that Louisiana hot sauce. Frank started and then told us about the secret ingredient. Oh, yeah, there's always one. And you also add the secret ingredient, which is horseradish. Ah, uh, yeah, good, right. good. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Oh, this will open your nostrils. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, I never think of horseradish when I think of Louisiana cooking. Now, where did the recipe come from? It came from my father-in-law, and uh, he liked things on the spicy yeah. side, and he, he came up with this recipe. Courtney samples the horseradish, then adds it to our Ramelade sauce. Allison stirs it up a little bit, then we blend the sauce with the other ingredients for our shrimp salad. Y'all, doesn't that look great with that beautiful shrimp? While the flavors married, Frank told us about his dad's days on the first offshore oil rig of Louisiana. There he is right there with the entire crew, y'all. Most important person on the job. <laughs> I'd say that's the most important person on the job, y'all. That's the cook. Frank even had a newspaper clipping from the very early days of offshore drilling in Louisiana. It was November 14, 1947 in the Gulf of Mexico, so it was 1947 right, in the that's, end. That's of correct. Y'all, the offshore oil business began in Louisiana shortly after World War II in November 1947. Well, after we looked at the newspaper clipping, it was time to sample Luke Lapree's what do you think? shrimp salad. That's good. That's right. Mm -hmm. Of course, my mother-in-law is the one that made it, and she's an expert at it. Oh, I tell you what, was it great? So, so you gave credit to your mother-in-law quickly on that recipe. Well, she, she, Luke most probably is the one invented it, but she's the one perfected it. Well, you know, and she's here with us in the audience today, Miss Leapery, and there she is, right there. Let's give her a hand. Look at that gorgeous face over there. <laughs> Did I? Uh, did, did she make the dressing for the salad she today? Made, she made the sauce today. We wouldn't trust it to anybody else Nobody but her. Nobody but her. Well, if she's here, she should make it. Now, now, Rex, I want you to take a good <laughs> picture of uh, this uh, right here because this is Luke Lepre right here, and he's the one who first came up with the recipe, right. and that's the, this is the traditions we try to follow today, Luke's great recipe. What a good-looking fellow. That reminds me a lot of myself. <laughs> Y'all, right? I want to introduce one other great person here, too, right at the... Uh, counter right here. Well, a cu couple of great people. <laughs> Angela Falgu, y'all. She's president of the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. You have a big job, huh? I'm glad to be here. And I'll tell you what, y'all do such a fantastic job for Louisiana. Y'all bring all of the people coming to visit. Right. Now, that shouldn't be too hard a job. You ought to oh, work no. for half price. <laughs> huh? we, we do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Louisiana, fantastic. We're going to talk about the Shrimp and Petroleum Festival, and I know that you have some, some ideas about that. Now, uh, let's talk about this recipe quickly, because it begins with great boiled shrimp. And I think we talked about how that Morgan City area became the shrimp capital of the world, because you said originally it was shrimping, right. and then uh, tell, tell us that story well, quickly. Well, when we had that discussion, what I had said was I thought that the shrimping was developed first, and then they discovered the oil, and then some of those vessels was converted to uh, support the oil industry. Right, right. And I think in the 60s, early 70s, they changed the name of the Shrimp Festival to the Louisiana Shrimp and Petroleum Festival. And uh -huh. it's supposed to be the oldest chartered uh, festival in the state of Louisiana. Well, it is, and what a fantastic festival. And, and I, you, you know, while we're mm. sitting right here chatting, I mean, I have to introduce your, your wife, Ms. Russo, right here. I mean, how could I forget? Welcome, welcome. Nice to, nice to have. Oh, y'all, I tell you. Uh, uh, anyway, y'all, the, the theme of the show today, the rough stuff. The rough stuff. And I want to show you why I'm calling it the rough stuff before I show you how to boil the shrimp. Take a look at what I have here because we're talking about salad greens, y'all. And we're going to make a salad today, uh, the uh, Luke Lee Pree's salad. And, of course, we're going to make a second dish using all these greens as well. Uh, uh, normally, 11 grams of fiber finds its way into our diets in, in Louisiana, where 30 grams of fiber uh, is recommended. So we're way short, and of course, this is all great fiber. It's fantastic to lower cholesterol and reduce colon cancer. So you want a lot of these greens, a lot of the rough stuff. Look at these gorgeous tomatoes. There's the shrimp again right here, y'all. Some beautiful little Belgian endives, radicchio. And of course, uh, we have everything from collard greens to red leaf to mustard green. Oh, there's so many wonderful things, and we're going to use some of all of this, y'all. But first, let's get back here again and boil the shrimp. Now, what I have here, by the way, did I introduce uh, Rex, my cameraman? I think I did. Now, Rex is the guy who's going to be stirring my pots with me today, getting everything deep down inside the pots. He's a great guy. Now, y'all, look at all the stuff we use to boil shrimp. You see the uh, big clove of, let me put that closer to you, that big clove of uh, garlic right there. You see the onions, the celery, the carrot, the peppercorns. I'm going to add to that 
some salt substitute because we want to add salt. And when using salt substitute, y'all, I recommend also adding some to the finished product because it'll taste pretty good uh, just on top of the finished boiled shrimp. Uh, pepper, you can add as much as you want of pepper because pepper, of course, has no fat, no sodium naturally. So you can add a lot of it. How pepper to taste, y'all, to taste. However, I have a good, uh, you know, in Louisiana, we like a lot of pepper, right? So now you see the water's boiling a lot right here. Now, what, how I boil my shrimp, y'all, I throw my shrimp down into the water and I leave the tails on and I throw them in there. And I tell you what I do, at this point, I cut the fire off and I stir it one time. You see how quick those shrimp curl? You don't want to overcook shrimp. You notice they're not peeled. I mean, they are peeled because I don't like to have the peelings on and try to peel them after I peel and score the shrimp before they ever go into the dish. And then I take them out. See, they've only been in there about, what, 20 seconds, and you notice those shrimp are almost fully cooked. Take a look at that. They're fully cooked in 20 seconds, and I would take them out and throw them in ice right away to keep them from cooking anymore. And Rex, this is what I did right here. See how beautiful that is? Mm -hmm. Just absolutely gorgeous in there. Plump. Who wants to taste the shrimp out there? Anybody? Huh? Put your hands up. I'm going to get your hand. There you go. There's the shrimp. All right. Huh? Who wants another shrimp? There you go. Huh? Right there, huh? <laughs> hey, it's Mardi Gras. Another shrimp, huh? <laughs> okay, y'all. Now, uh, hey, y'all can't catch. Y'all can't catch. Okay, Rex, right here. Into my bowl. Now I have to make Luke salad dressing on this Lipri's salad dressing. But I'm using, I'm using a low-fat mayonnaise. I'm using a light mayonnaise here because I have to cut the fats out dramatically. And the light mayonnaise, remember seafood is low in fat as well, y'all, so the light mayonnaise will cut the, ca the fats here about 74%, 74%. Now, uh, I think uh, Courtney and Allison, Courtney, you gave me, what, about a cup of, uh, a cup of ketchup in there? That's about right, huh? But, uh, yeah, I don't even think I did. I introduce Courtney and Allison. I don't think so. We got to catch a Keith. Uh, get a good shot of Courtney and Allison right there in the front row. Those two beautiful girls, because they're the ones who helped me put the salad together at their house. And boy, I tell you what, they did a fantastic job of it too. Those two gorgeous faces right there. Ah, oh, there they are. That's Courtney right there, and Allison is right across the table with that beautiful big smile. I wish y'all were here to help me. Now that I have all. <laughs> okay, now y'all. So I've got my ketchup and my light mayonnaise in here, 74% reduction in fat, if you can imagine that. Now, the horseradish. Now, we talked about horseradish. I don't, I'm not quite sure. Did we ever figure out why, how it made its way into the recipe? It's really great, though. Well, I think he always just liked something with a tangy taste and some kind of way that worked its way into it. A lot of the right. dishes that he prepared. Okay, no, I tell you, it's wonderful. Uh, oh, whoo! See, look, that hot sauce is hot. It's, <laughs> hey, that, hey, whoo! Huh? Let me hold that with a towel. You see, I told you I needed you, Courtney. Huh? How much should I put a lot, huh, y'all? Oh, that bottle is steaming hot, y'all. Okay, now with that, I'm gonna add, this is all the things you added into the recipe right here other than salt and a little bit of pepper. I'm gonna add some herbs. Because when I reduce fats, y'all, I always like to put a little herbs into the dish. So I'm gonna put basil, thyme, and a little bit of tarragon. Tarragon is great with seafoods, and I'll put it down in there like that and whirl that around just a little bit. Now I'm gonna add a little eye appeal, too. I'm gonna add some pretty colors. I'm gonna add the yellow and red bell pepper. I'm gonna add the green bell pepper, a little purple cabbage to it. And all of this great confetti doesn't do anything for uh, sodium and fat, but boy, I tell you what, does it make the dish look really nice. So once that's all done, my salad dressing is done, I'm gonna add, again, some salt substitute to this. Remember, the shrimp has salt substitute in it. I can add a little bit more pepper, depending on the amount of heat that I need right here. This looks really good, nice, nice heat in there. And then I'll whisk that around, and my salad dressing is all done. Now, this is pretty much the way you did it, other than the fact that I've added uh, I've added up maybe a whole hot sauce bottle. Huh? <laughs> I had a hot sauce. I like to throw the whole bottle in mine, y'all. Huh? Uh, but then, of course, the, the colored stuff and then the, the herbs. I added herbs to mine. Yeah. And, that's a, and that's about it. Yeah. Now for my salad greens. Here they are right here. Oh, take a look at this, uh, Rex. Look at my greens. I have, uh, I have Boston bib lettuce. I have romaine in here. I have some, uh, some of that radicchio for that nice spiciness. Now, you use basically iceberg lettuce That's in yours. Right, yeah. I'm going to change mine by, change that, that by adding some beautiful uh, lettuces with different textures. 
So I'm going to put a little bit of this down in my salad bowl here, just a couple of nice big handfuls in the salad bowl like that. And then I'm going to take my shrimp. I'm going to throw some of them in there as well. <laughs> hey, y'all better watch me. I'm coming at you. Oh, look at the shrimp there. Now, y'all, one other thing you use, basically you use chopped tomatoes in yours, right? Now, Rex, take a look at this. That's the chopped tomatoes that would normally go into the salad right here. But I'm going to swap that around with these tomatoes right here. Take a look at those. These are the beautiful pear plum uh, currant tomatoes because they shape differently. They don't taste any different but they sure look a lot different, and it just makes the dish look a little bit better. And then, of course, y'all, the salad dressing. Oh, you ready for this, Rex? Oh, you ready for that? A Niagara Falls of salad dressing, huh? Oh, look how beautiful that is. And you know, I could put more in here because it's low fat. 74% less fat, y'all, and it's gonna have a lot of great flavor in there as well. And then, of course, you can kind of uh, toss that around a little bit. I think you have the general idea here. And uh, you can put as much shrimp. And you know what else I like to put in here? Edible flowers, y'all. Edible flowers. Take a look at these. This is the petals of dianthus, marigolds. That's all edible. And boy, does it do a lot for a salad. Look how pretty that looks when you just throw it on top of the salad. So uh, that's what I would do to mine. Just a little bit different, not a whole lot. A whole lot more shrimp I might, might throw in there like that, huh? <laughs> And then what I'll do is I'll have, I'll have Angela, since she's right at the counter, serve up a little plate of it here, Angela. And if you serve one of them real fast, I'll give it to Luke so that he can uh, taste it while I show his. Let me show yours. Get, uh, let me have that because you brought this wonderful dish here today. And Rex just said, you're making more noise than I make, <laughs> Angela. Look at this right here, Rex, how great that looks, huh? Oh, that's beautiful, huh, y'all? Huh? Luke? Lee Freeze salad is just beautiful, and I'm going to taste some of that myself. In fact, I'm going to put this in my refrigerator, y'all. Huh? Huh? All right, the second dish I'm going to do for y'all while Angela's serving that. You got that? Y'all oh, yeah. eating it already? Oh, y'all want two plates. Oh, I see. Y'all want, oh, want two plates. I see. Look, just because you're my guest don't mean you get two plates. Huh? No, I'm just kidding you. That's your second plate. Look. <laughs> okay, Rex, let's remind everybody about the salad greens that we have here because we're going to do a dish called gumbo zab, y'all. Gumbo zab, and I'll tell you the name of that. But here's all the greens, and I'm going to use the heavy leaf greens for this. Remember the rough stuff, y'all. That's what I'm after today. And look at the meats in this soup. This is a green soup using the leaves of all those plants. I'm going to put brisket in it. I've defatted the brisket. I'm putting lean turkey sausage. Tasso, the very spicy ham. I'm using lean turkey ham in the place of the fat ham that has all the fat on the outside of it. And this is salt meat, and I'm going to replace that with a lean turkey bacon. So all those beautiful smoked meats go in my dish. I'm just going to replace the fat stuff with the lean turkey bacon and ham and, of course, the sausage and the tasso. So, Rex, I'm going to come right here to this... Uh, little fire here. And in the bottom of my black iron pot, y'all, how's that silent? Fine. Uh, fine? <laughs> Frank says it's fine. <laughs> I know what Frank is saying. Frank says it ain't nothing like Luke. Like Luke Siler, right? Is that what you're saying? No, no, it's very good. No, I'm just kidding. I know it. Yeah. And Angela, you notice I put <laughs> Luke's on the back counter, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. No, y'all, it really is, uh, really is good. And I mean, uh, you know, the, just the lightness. I mean, remember when you're modifying recipes, you're never going to get 100% of the, the dish that you're looking for. I mean, you, you do realize you're modifying, but put, the, put a lot of the nice things, like the flowers and all of that in it. Y'all, I've, uh, I've taken this turkey bacon, and I've sauteed it here for a little bit, and I'm going to add a, about two tablespoons of olive oil in here. And I'm going to let that saute for just a second. Now what I'm going to do, y'all, is to make a dish called gumbo zab. And Rex, look into this. This is about seven of those greens you saw in that big basket that was poached for about five minutes. Uh, and then added to that was all those meats you saw back there. And after the meats were tender, I ran this through a Cuisinart to, to just blend all of this gr the greens up, and then, Rex, I saved the stock. See this here? This is the wonderful stock right there, the green stock from poaching the greens. 
Uh, this green gumbo, gumbo zab, uh, Z apostrophe H-E-R-B-S, is actually, gets its name from the, uh, uh, the, the, the French word for grass. Z, er, herbs, after all, is just grass, right? So I'm adding a little onions to this pot, a little red, uh, a little yellow, uh, uh, orange, and green bell pepper. Garlic, y'all, you like garlic? Oh, you better believe it. I'm putting a little garlic in there. And I'm going to stir that around just a little bit. Just saute that for just a second. And once this saute is, I'm going to add to that the meat, y'all, that I actually poached a little earlier. Rex, take a look at that. There's my brisket. I'm going to add my brisket back to the dish because it's already tender. And I took that out. I'm going to add my smoky ham. This is the, uh, I'm sorry, this is the tasso here. Tasso, the nice spicy ham from Louisiana. And then the lean turkey ham. So all the meats go down into the pot. Then, Frank, I'm going to add some flour because I want to thicken this green gumbo. This is a gumbo that was normally made in Louisiana during Lent. So I'm going to stir that around a little bit and they would leave the meat out on Friday. Okay? Yeah. Angela, we were talking a minute ago about the Shrimp and Petroleum Festival, okay? And festivals really bring a lot of dollars, a lot of tourism to Louisiana, like the uh, Shrimp and Petroleum Festival, right? That's right. We and have hundreds of festivals all over the state that people come to every year. Last year we had about 26 million people who visited Louisiana, and a good part of that was for these fairs and festivals. And the festivals are about music, they're celebrating food, they're celebrating culture. How many festivals in Louisiana now, you think? Oh, 400, somebody least, told me. Yes, every yes. weekend of the year. Okay, Rex, follow me here. Follow, uh, follow. Uh, you know the good news, Angela? I'm already here. I don't have to come <laughs> to Louisiana to go to the fest. I'm putting in my chopped greens, seven different greens, and the old folks say you can put any greens you want into this pot, any greens you'd like. I'm going to add my stock now. This is the stock I reserved from boiling the greens. Oh, y'all, the rough stuff. The rough stuff here, y'all. All of that wonderful greens. Can you imagine how healthy this is? Again, 30 grams of fiber a, 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 a day we're supposed to take in, and we only take in 11. Y'all, I'm using just two tablespoons of uh, oil. I'm using lean ham and, of course, defatted stock. So 80% of the fat is cooked out of this dish, 80%. A little salt substitute, a little pepper, y'all, and I want to show you, Rex, what this looks like when it's all said and done. I would let this cook for a couple of minutes and take a look in my pot here, Rex. Oh, look in here, look in here. Oh, look at that green gumbo with all the meats. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, y'all go ahead. Oh, I wish you could. And Angela, look, there's some bowls right in front of your hand, a couple of bowls like that down there. Oh, that's beautiful, y'all. Now, a couple of things I would serve with this, a couple of things I'd serve with it. Take a look at my artichokes right here, y'all. Baked artichoke casserole, I used olive oil, light margarine, water-packed olives in here to cut the salt. Low-fat mozzarella cheese, I cut the fat in this casserole, 80% in the sodium, 45% in this beautiful, casserole of artichokes and olives. It's just gorgeous. A nice side dish to this. Now, Rex, my fig cake. Oh, look at these figs right here in the jar. Get down there, Rex. Get amongst those figs, Rex. Take a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, those oh, look at those figs right there. Now, Rex, watch what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to christen this cake. I'm going to give this cake the Cajun baptism. This is that nice fig syrup. Oh, yeah, I know y'all. I know I'm hurting yeah. you over there. Now, look in the center, I have fig preserves right there in the center of the cake, and now I have some nice chopped fig preserves right on top of it. Oh, y'all. Yeah. The fig cake, light margarine, egg substitute, low-fat buttermilk in here, powdered sugar. Oh, I'm going to put a lot of powdered sugar. Uh, low-fat uh, low buttermilk, y'all. I cut the cholesterol 99% in this cake, and the fats 60%. Oh. I know, Angela, you want this instead yeah. of gumbo zab, right? Yeah. yeah, I know you want this. <laughs> Y'all, I want to ask you one question. Who says mama's cooking can't be healthy? Nobody. Yeah. That's it. Y'all, thanks so much for being here today. Really nice to have y'all. And uh, Courtney and Allison, y'all can come up here and help me serve. Y'all run up here right now. Run up here. Hurry up. Hurry up right here. Right here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, y'all.
Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and believe different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Something old and something new. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $29.95. This companion book to the television series features over 150 recipes. To order, please send check or money order to the address shown on your screen. A Taste of Louisiana, Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $19.95. This VHS video contains one episode of Chef John Fultz's new television series. Please send check or money order to the address on your screen and mention the show number with your order.